On the 1st of May 1915, the RMS Lusitania, which was a luxury ocean liner, left New York for Liverpool. But here there was a great anxiety. Germany had declared that the seas around Britain were a war zone and its submarines were bringing terror to the Atlantic. The Lusitania's captain, William Thomas Turner, had faith because it was a commercial board, there should be no risk for the Lusitania or for its passengers. And he really tried to reassure the people on board. He really believed that civilian ships were safe from any types of attack. He also knew that the Lusitania was the fastest in service and could outrun any threat. But what he didn't expect was to Germany to change the rules of the war and to use a U-boat and submarine to create terror in the seas. Unfortunately, when the Lusitania left on the 1st May 1915, it was its last crossing. The reason why the sinking of the Lusitania is something that we still talk about today remains in a collective memory is because we have these questions what the hell happened but also most importantly was it unavoidable was it like something that could have been completely avoided the germans are going to defend their decision they're going to say that it's because actually the lusitania had a cargo of munitions for britain which the us is completely going to deny the sinking of the Lusitania, it marks the end of the protection of civilians. It marks the end of a sort of a code between the different countries who are at war against one another. One of the best books that you can read, if not honestly the best book on the topic, is definitely Eric Larson, Dead Wake. I mean, this book is not only a page turner, the research is absolutely incredible. You get in the details of what's the life on the Lusitania. You also try to understand what was the point of view of the German. And so here we're going to try to find a way to explain the timeline of what happened, how Germany is going to try to warn Britain and try to warn the passengers on the Lusitania. And we're also going to discuss, obviously, the ramifications of such a tragedy. The German made a warning to all passengers that wanted to go on board the Lusitania. Travelers intending to embark on the Atlantic voyage are reminded that a state of war exists between Germany and her allies and Great Britain and her allies and the zone of war includes the waters adjacent to the British Isles, that in accordance with formal notice given by the Imperial German government, vessels flying the flag of Great Britain or of any of our allies are liable to destruction in those waters, and that travellers sailing in the wars and on ships of Great Britain or allies do so at their own risk by the Imperial German Embassy. The message was really clear. The Cunan line, who was in charge of the RMS Lusitania, did show the warning to the passengers. The question now is that with such a warning, it's very clear, we're in a war zone, we can take anyone down. Why would the Lusitania, being so sure that being a civilian ship, they were not really put at risk? Here, it's a very complex story that is linked really to the mystery of what happened, what actually happened, why would someone make such a decision? Here, I really believe that the Germans must have felt that there must have been some threat in the Lusitania. Maybe they didn't believe that the Lusitania was a true civilian ship until the very end, until they did what they did. But it's also the story of two men, Captain Turner and Lieutenant Walter Schwiger, who was in charge of the U-20 that sunk the Lusitania. In war diaries, he did describe the attack and the rapid sinking of the great liner as he viewed it through his periscope. Walter spent a lot of time deciding, and you have everything in Eric Larson's book, when he should make an attack on the Lusitania. And 
what I love in Date Wake, Eric Larson's Date Wake, is the fact that it really brings you, like, if you, it gives you a lot of context about the Lusitania, about the line. It happened before the Lusitania left New York for Liverpool. But it also gives you really the side of the German and how the Germans are going to hesitate until they really made the decision, oh, that's a good view, that's a good, you know, that's a good shot, and how to go at it. Lusitania was torpedoed by the German U-boat on 7th May 1915 and it sunk in 18 minutes. I want you to imagine the rapidity of it and how the passengers must have felt. The fear, the anxiety and we have survivors obviously of the Lusitania but really not that many. Of the Lusitania's 1,959 passengers and crew, only 764 survived. The total of death was 1,195. Over 600 passengers were never found. Among the dead were 123 Americans. The sinking of the Lusitania shook Europe. The it's not, it, it was because it was horrific, because really it was felt like Germany was going above and beyond to really terrorize, you know, um, its enemies. And it's almost like it, they crossed a line by sinking people who had nothing to do with the war, but also more importantly, who had no way to defend themselves and I think that's why we are still remembering this today is because of this is because of the fact that the Lusitania had no option no way to defend itself so it really feels like an attack on innocence itself Germany was criticized and was named a cold-blooded murder it was blamed for the sinking of the Lusitania but more importantly for the death of hundreds of women and children Germans have murdered thousands of innocent civilians and they really believed that it was a question then of justice, of right or wrong. And as what I said, Germany had crossed a line that they really felt should not have been crossed. And that no, nothing could take anything back to where it was. The war was going to rage on even more. But now it had given Britain and its allies even more determination to win against Germany. While it is important to note that the sinking of the Lusitania was not the single main factor that contributed to the entrance of the United States into the World War I, you know, two years later, it certainly solidified the public's opinions toward Germany. There was a really resentment towards what Germany had done. From the sinking of the Lusitania, you will have all the American newspapers pushing and putting more pictures of the war in Europe, trying to really make the American people thinking that they needed to fight the good fight, that they needed to stand for justice. And Lusitania in many ways was one of the symbols of that justice because it had been sunk. It was only civilians. At the end of the day, they chose to kill thousands of civilians. And the way they justified it was not very convincing. You know, the horrific sinking of the Lusitania is a reminder that Germany broke naval laws, that Germany attacked a civilian ship, and that changed the rules of war. It was reported in newspapers. The Irish Times also reported the disaster. Lusitania torpedoed. Great liner think in eight minutes. Fear loss of over 1,300 lives. 600 survivors landed at Queenstown. I mean, there is something about the shock of how quickly the Lusitania sank. And we have to remember here, it's like basically three years after the Titanic from the same company. So like we have this idea that, you know, there is almost no more guarantee of a strong ship of a strong liner that you cannot even now cross the ocean safely there's really this kind of fear of the ocean a fear of dying at sea one of the survivors was the american survivors barbara mcdermott 
who died on the 12th April 2008 at the age of 95. She was on board of the Lusitania with her mother and she remembers being in the ship's dining room eating dessert when the torpedo hit, the first one. She remembers holding onto her spoon as she saw fellow passengers running about the badly damaged ship. In the midst of the chaos, Barbara was separated from her mother and put onto the lifeboat number 15. She will learn after that that her mother was going to be put as well on the same lifeboat, but they were separated for some time. Barbara was only three years old. There is something very tragic about all these stories, all these lives that were lost. You also have to remember, and I think again, Eric Larson's dent work does that really well, is like how many people knew about the death of their loved ones through telegrams. And sometimes some people were reported to be alive when actually they were dead. And there was really like a, a, a complete chaos around the sinking of Lusitania. I think it really shook Europe. And I think it really made Germany look so bad that now there was almost like, you know, the good ones and the bad ones. It's almost like that line that they crossed by deciding to hit the Lusitania was going to make irrevocable outcomes for the rest almost of the century. No one would ever kind of forget what happened to the passengers of the RMS. Lusitania. I really hope that you enjoyed that video and I really hope that you will want to know more and read more books and watch more documentaries maybe on the RMS Lusitania. Thank you so much for watching my what the hell happened in history video and I'll see you next time. Bye!